What's going on everyone, Dots Gaming here, and today I'm bringing you my top 10 tips for new players in Black Desert Online in 2022. Before we hop into the tips today, I do just want to mention, and I will link in the description below, that my two previous years that I have done tip videos, 2021 and 2020, all of the tips in those videos are still totally relevant and still are completely useful in the game of BDO today. And my goal with today's video is to not include any tips from those two videos and make this year's video 10 new tips that can stand completely on their own. So if you do want to, after you're done watching this video, go feel free to check those out for some more additional beginner tips. I do just want to mention that one of the tips that I have in my previous video about the Oasis vendor, that is no longer relevant since that vendor is no longer present in the game. So I did just want to mention that in case you do choose to go check out those previous videos. But now, without further ado, let's hop into the tips for 2022, starting off with my first one, and that is going to be to create a season server character if a season is available. Creating a character on a season server is basically, you can almost think of it like a fast pass way to get a character started. You get a lot of really good rewards from creating and leveling on the season, creating a character and leveling on the season server. Not only do you get additional experience for simply playing on the season server, there is essentially kind of like a quote battle pass, but it's a season pass essentially for Black Desert Online that there's a free path of course, and then a paid path that does cost about 30 US dollars and it gives you a ton of additional rewards and things for your character to help get yourself all set up and ready to go. On top of that, you get a ton of items that help you level certain, um, you know, things for your character, such as like breath, strength, etc. These other stats that you would normally have to, you know, take more time to level, but you could level them up a lot quicker by doing it on the season server. And on top of that, you get a really fantastic set of gear when you are done, which is called Tuvala gear, which is essentially the equivalent to 10 at boss armor and you can actually end up exchanging it for pieces to go into the guaranteed pen system which is going to help you get some of the best gear in the game which i will discuss later here in this video but i also have a video on how to enhance your tuvala gear to get it to pen and make it the strongest that it can before you graduate and i'll also link that in the description below but simply leveling on a season server is going to give you a significantly larger advantage over someone that chooses to not do that my second tip is going to be that there are two paths to level 60 61. You can quest or you can grind slash AFK train. Now, a lot of times when you are talking to people, by the time you finish the main quest, you're going to notice that you're probably at about, I'd say, level 56. At that point, you have to do your awakening and succession quest lines, which are essentially how you unlock your specs for your character. And once that's done, you're going to have people that give you two totally different schools of thought. Some people tell you, oh, just quest to 61. It's super, super fast. And other people say, don't bother, just grind. And I'm going to tell you you guys today that I think what you should do it depends on your goals. If this is going to be your main character, the character that you play the most, I personally recommend going through the route of grinding slash AFK training. The reason that I say that is because while you grind, not only will you be making money, you will also be gaining skill points for your character, which are crucial for your character's development. And if you do quest the 61, you're going to have to go grind those skill points at some point anyway. So like, I prefer to just grind them while I'm leveling to 61. And another great thing that you could do on the season servers is that you can go talk to Jamie in any major town that, that has target dummies and you can set your character to AFK train while you're not at your PC and you can gain a boatload of experience for both skill and combat by doing it this way because your character's level experience and your skill experience do level up separately which is why you know I recommend grinding if this character is going to be your main so that you can get those two experience levels at the same time because if you just simply quest the 61 sure your combat level will get to 61 really quickly but you won't have a lot of skill points now i personally do recommend questing for those of you who maybe this character is not going to be your main or it's you know just like an additional character that you're gonna have and you don't really care about your skill points and you're just like i want to get to 61 as quick as possible for my season pass in that case questing will be faster undoubtedly will be quicker so you know it's up to you whether or not you want to do that um, there are plenty of guides on the internet about how to quest the 61 in the most efficient way to go do that. I will also link one in the description below in case you do want to follow it. 
The third tip that I'm going to have for you guys is going to be to use Fugar's timepiece. Do not delete it to graduate from the season servers. I'm going to have a guide on Fugar's timepiece coming out very soon on my YouTube channel. So feel free to go check it out and see if I have released that video yet. But Fugar's timepiece essentially is a way for you to duplicate the experience that you've gotten on your season character onto a different character. And you can't graduate or move on from the season servers if that item is in your inventory. So some people just choose to delete it which is a huge mistake it's better to use that and actually get yourself another character because you essentially are getting another 61 character with all of the combat and skill experience that you have for free it's also a really good way if you're trying a character out on the season server and you're not the biggest fan of it it's the same way for you to basically not miss any of your progress and then just move that over to a new character and then try them out so again don't delete this item be sure to use it. Uh, my fourth tip is going to be on how on optimizing your game. BDO, it's a beautiful looking game, but because of that, it can get a little hectic on performance on some people's machines. And there's a lot of optimization that you can do to make Black Desert run a lot better. So I'm gonna link two links in the description below. There's gonna be the ultimate performance guide that is always floating around the Reddit on how to gain some extra performance on your game, as well as my own personal user interface guide if you want to see how I personally have my in-game settings set up. Um, I know there's a lot of links in the description below. You're going to notice that a lot with Black Desert. There's a lot of different resources out there. So I'm trying to just basically bring those all here for you guys so that you can look at those if you do want to take a look at them. But optimizing your game is really important for BDO because it's a very fast-paced game and making sure that your game runs as quickly as possible and with the most FPS, the best performance is going to make it so that you don't miss a beat with your timing on your combat skills. You're going to notice very quickly when you start playing BDO. It's a very combo paced game. There's a lot of specific timing with things. You got to try to read your opponents and stuff. And if you're lagging, if you're getting all these stutters and stuff, then you're going to be at a disadvantage to your opponent in such a fast paced game. So making sure your game runs as well as possible and following that, especially the ultimate performance guide is going to be really important to make sure your game runs as good as possible. My fifth tip for you guys is going to be to use trial characters to test out classes. You can actually make max level characters if you go to the character selection screen, click, you know, and look at the trial characters. It basically will put you in a area that's called battle arena. It's kind of just like an open field where you have a bunch of target dummies. You could fight other people if they are present, but this is a really good way to test out classes with their full kits, with all their abilities. You can switch between awakening and succession, which are essentially like the class specs, and you can see see which ones you would like. I know myself recently, um, I was debating on a character that I wanted to use Fugar's timepiece on, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And so in addition to looking at some YouTube videos about the classes, I also made trial characters of the classes and messed around on them myself and was able to determine through trying out these classes, which I preferred. BDO's got a lot of classes in a game. It's very intimidating to try to, you know, pick one and see what you want to do, but using trial characters can help you make that decision and really allow you to test things out to see what you would like my sixth tip for you guys is going to be to look into the guaranteed pen accessory boss armor and weapon quest lines especially if you not played black desert in a long time and you are just coming back to the game bdo has done a great job at improving the gear curve in the game by adding some more what i call medium term goals for your gear and now getting pen gear is a lot easier than it used to be in the past and is a lot more guaranteed and you are not forced to go through enhancement if you do not want to so there are again three more links in the description below i will eventually have my own guides out on this but for right now i don't so i'll link you some resources that will allow you to look at how you can get guaranteed one guaranteed pen accessory guaranteed pen boss armor as well as guaranteed pen weapons and it's a really really good path to follow it's a very attainable goal for most people and it's a really good way for you to make progressive goals from the tech gear that you're essentially going to have after you graduate from the season server and exchange that stuff for this guaranteed boss armor uh, that can get upgraded to pen it's just it's a really good segue to go from the season server into the end game gearing process so i definitely recommend checking that out especially if you are a returning player this is a brand new feature and it is very very good speaking of brand new features tip number seven is going to be to utilize the item collection gauge so basically there is a scroll that you can use in BDO that can increase the number of items or increase the drop the drop chance for rare items to drop and in the past one of the struggle points with BDO is that you would go to a grind spot you would use a scroll 
and then some dude would come and push you off the grind spot and keep killing you over and over again and because of that you ended up losing your scroll but now that is no longer the case because we actually have a gauge that we can turn on and off at will to basically activate or deactivate the scroll so you no longer have to worry about oh no i just popped a scroll and now it's you know just gonna go into the wind um, this applies to the normal blue and gold quality item collection scrolls it does not apply to special ones like old moon scrolls j scrolls etc but this you you can basically get this by hitting escape going to adventure and then clicking the item collection gauge and you can stake that on your screen clicking it will allow you to turn on the different levels level one is going to be just um giving you mostly a higher like a quality drop chance as well as a small increase to trash loot and then rank two will give you an even bigger increase to trash loot dropped so definitely something to activate and have on your screen and is a really good quality of life thing that's been added into bdo relatively recently speaking of again new things added to bdo number eight check your progression pass bdo has also added this new progression pass thing that gives you some small rewards for essentially just kind of playing the game and doing a lot of different things and you can get a bunch of rewards from doing it so if you click this icon at the top right of your screen you will notice that there is a boatload of tabs and pages this rewards at the top of this thing this rewards at the bottom this rewards on the page itself just if you especially if you haven't played bdo in a while and you're just coming back to the game you're going to want to open this you're going to want to click around collect all your rewards and you know be sure to check all the different tabs if you see a little picture of a like a like a present next to it means you have something to collect um it'll be glowing when you get there and again also do not forget to check the top and bottom of this window as there can be rewards that you do miss through like the little gauge pass thing that you also see at the top and bottom so be sure to collect all the rewards from this especially as a returning player i know when i personally came back to the game i had a lot of stuff because it does retroactively look at your account and everything that you've done and you can go and collect all of those rewards my ninth tip for this guide, guys, is going to be to choose one city as your home base. Uh, personally, I do recommend Hydel. It's a very central location in the game. It's got a lot of good nodes about it. It's pretty easy to access most parts of the map from Hydel. And the reason that it is good to have one city as your home base is because you can invest a lot of your contribution points into increasing your bank space here. You can kind of keep most of your stuff in this bank and you can, you know, again, have when you actually collect things with your uh workers from the nodes all of it comes back here it's just i find it really helpful to have like one home base city and put most of my stuff there because again all of my contribution upgrades can really go to making one city really good and i don't have to worry about oh i have some stuff over here and i have some stuff over there and i have some stuff over here everything for the most part is in one place don't get me wrong i have some quote secondary cities like i have some storage stuff in velia i have some stuff in olvia but that's mostly because i have um life scalers in those different towns so i have stuff relevant to what those characters are doing there while the main hub of my storage is in Hydel. so i think planning out your storage like that is going to be very beneficial for you and your account if you want to i also do have a guide on both storage and node workers and housing and how those systems work and once again i will link those in the description below and my 10th and final tip is going to be a very important one for BDO, especially you want to set goals for yourself because BDO is a sandbox game. It does not hold your hand at all and tell you what you should be doing. You need to figure out your own goals and i highly recommend for like a good like bdo plan you want to set short term medium term and long term goals for yourself also don't bite off more than you can chew at once this game has a lot to it there's a lot of different things going on in black desert and if you try to bite off everything at once i think you're going to end up burning yourself out the game truly is a marathon and not a sprint so just you know work on what you want to work on set goals for yourself enjoy the sandbox and never feel pressured to work on oh god i gotta do this now and i gotta do this now and i gotta do this now just play and do what you want at your own pace and that is how you will get the most enjoyment out of the game but guys, that is going to be it for me today on my top 10 tips for 2022. Again, if you do want to see some different tips from previous years that are so completely relevant in BDO this year, feel free to check out those links in the description below. If you guys do have any questions for me, again, do not hesitate to comment below as well. If you like this video and how it found it helpful, I'd really appreciate a lot if you left a like on it. And for more BDO beginner guides, please feel free to hit that sub button as well as hit the bell to keep those notifications on. So thank you all so much for stopping by today. I do very much appreciate it. As always, I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see you all in the next video.